Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Adrian Gilliard here with Sandra Bazan, and we're from the ELC's inclusion team, bringing you Behavior Bites tidbits. Our tidbit topic for today is teaching an oppositional child. In other words, it's the child that always says no. No. <laughs> this defiance is very common in our toddlers and our preschoolers. And in fact, I think that it is written in their job description for them to say no. And <laughs> sometimes that defiance comes in the form of them just saying the words no, or it can come in the form of a whisper, whisper, a forceful head shake, or them planting their feet firmly on the ground, stiffening their bodies, and they will not budge. budge. And so one of the biggest reasons why our toddlers and our preschoolers use the words no is because they can. Being able to say no to something puts a great deal of power in their hands. And quite often, their refusal is less about not wanting to do something, but more about exercising control mm -hmm. over a situation that they haven't been able to, to do in the past. Yeah. So sometimes I'm saying the word no is okay, even though it might frustrate us. But there are times when the word no is not an option when you're trying to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. So um, Sandy, what are some strategies that you have when it comes to teaching the oppositional child? Well, Adrian, you know that these are my favorites, right? Like the, this is, this is the, um, these are the behaviors that I just, I love, I love the most because you're right. So you have these kids and all of a sudden they have this, no, this power and, and, and it's, it's more so I like, remember, I always say like change our perspective. Right. It's more so um, instead of you taking it personally, it's more so them figuring out that they are an entity onto themselves, that they are a whole person outside of mom and dad and that immediate family, right? And that they have some serious um, wants and needs and they have a word that can get them what they want, when they want it, how they want it. And so now we've got this arsenal in our, and it's one word and all it is, it's no. And like you said, they can, they, there's nonverbal protests. Those are the ones that they're just going to look at you. Like you didn't say nothing. <laughs> you know, there's, you have the other ones that say no, and they're screaming at you, but they're on their way to do what you asked them to do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I love that uh, one. You know, like, uh, okay. You know, there's so many different the reasons as to the why's, right? But more so than that, I think as teachers and educators, we get really, really frustrated because we have so many students, and and there is a certain flow to the classroom, and 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 we have to understand, you know, that we are not trying to break the spirit. Of a, of a spirited child. That, that, is, Absolutely. that is not what we are trying to do because what I want to emphasize is he might be a little rough around the edges at three, but at 33, you want somebody who has, you know, a voice, who knows their boundaries, who has a set of clear and established what they will, what they won't, what, you know, you, you want somebody who is ambitious and has, you know, um, the words to, to, to stand up for themselves and speak their minds. And you want all of those right. in an adult. It's just getting them to the adult part, right? So what do we do with the little ones that are, that are forever telling us no? Well, I think that the number one thing is to understand where it comes from. And like we said, it's all about power. So one of the strategies, probably the best strategy is to provide options. Mm -hmm. Choice. Options, choices, but choices that I, as the adult, am going to be okay with. Do I really care if you have strawberry yogurt or banana yogurt? I don't care. But to a three-year-old, a four-year-old, if I'm offering, I'm not saying, do you want yogurt? Because if yogurt is the only thing that I'm able to offer, then my choice um, delivery needs to be, what kind of yogurt would you like? Not, do you want yogurt? Because what if they say no, and now you're stuck? All you have is yogurt. So right. you're going to say, you know, um, Adrian, it's it's breakfast time, honey. What kind of yogurt would you like? Would you like strawberry yogurt or the banana yogurt? And now I've given you an opportunity to, you know, make a choice. Mm -hmm. What if Adrian says, no, I want pancakes or waffles? You make a, you know, you don't always have to, not everything is a, is a battle that you need to get into, right? If, mm -hmm. if, 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 if that's okay, then that's okay. 
good choice, honey. There you go. Fine. Pick and choose your battles, right? Uh -huh. But now we're in the classroom. And once we're in the classroom, that's hard, hard, hard to do. So one of the strategies, and we've talked about this a million times, is to have structure and routine and to have consistency and follow through. If every time, if every time you've asked Adrian to go and clean up and every time Adrian said no, no. And every time Adrian was then required to take a break until she was ready, I'm giving the power back to her. I'm giving the power back to you, Adrian. When you're ready, mamita, when you are ready, you go ahead and clean up. When that is done, then you may go ahead and do ABC, whatever it is Adrian wanted to do, right? And so that's how you handle it. But you have to be ready to go the full length of it because mm -hmm. you have these children that will test you they will test you and so their control is no and your control is your reaction to that no right so that's your power that's our superpower as the adults in the room right like if I am going to let a four-year-old or a three-year-old tell me no and have that unnerve me to a place where I, they got me flustered well guess what they just want Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself is reinforcing, right? And so non-compliant, you get the no, um, offer choices. Like you said, sometimes there's, there's no other option. You can always give them an option as far as, do you want to do it right now? Or do you want to go take a break until you're ready? Mm -hmm. You're still getting your way as an educator. Do you want to do it? Whatever it is, write your name. Um, I don't know whatever, make the art project, whatever it is, do you want to do it right now? Or do you want to go ahead and take a break until you're ready? I'm giving the power back. However, when that child is ready, and again, explicitly explain what does ready look like? What does what it does look it like? Sound like? What are you looking for? I want quiet hands, quiet mouth, quiet feet. When you're ready, let me know. The second that child lets me know, I then have to go back to what? That first initial um, directive that I got the no for. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we tend to try not to rattle the cage. We don't, we don't want to poke the bear. We don't want to, we don't want that whole no. We don't want the defiance. We don't want the tantrum. We just rather tiptoe around it, right? Right. You will never be able to um to handle or to 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 kind of to, change those behaviors unless you see them you cannot you know um fix a non-compliant defiant behavior unless you give that child a reason to be to, to not comply to okay. not comply and be defiant and okay. so when, we, when you know when I hear the teacher say oh I don't want to because then he's getting that's the point that's the point that's our jobs to get them to that place where we can help them regulate right where we can give them those opportunities to say okay, I really don't want to do that, but she gave me a chance. I can do it now, or I can do it in five minutes. I'm still going to have to do it. They will know because remember it's consistency. It's every time Adrian did not want to clean up. Every time Miss Sandy said, I get it, girl. I understand, mamita. Go ahead and take a break. When you're ready, you let me know. Quiet hands, quiet mouth, quiet feet, you let me know. And then you will be able to go to, what center did you want to go to, Agent? Housekeeping. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep a spot open just for you. Right. And you know, Sandy, it's like you've always said before, a, a lot of that behavior is learned behavior. And I hear teachers a lot of times that say, you know what, I just let him go ahead and do whatever it is he wants to do, because I don't want to deal with the tantrums. I don't want to deal with him screaming in my face telling me no. So I just let him do it. But he's then learned. What is he, what is that teacher taught? First of all, that teacher is taught no zero, zero, zero skills on resilience. Correct. I'm sorry, we are going to, our children are going to hear the words, no, uh -huh. whether it's from the parents, whether it's from a teacher, whether it's from a peer, they're going to have to understand, no, doesn't feel good to anybody, but this is what I can do to work through that, right? Absolutely. And so when you are a teacher and you're, and, and I get it, oh man, do I get, oh, I, I get, get it, it because I've done it because I, I know it's like, you know what? I know that he's I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that because yes. I've done it. 
I've definitely I've done, it. done it. And, and oh. to say that means that we are human. And mm -hmm. to say that means that I have been able to look at the woman in the mirror and say, Ooh, not today, Miss Sandy, you don't got what it takes today. <laughs> Today is not the day we're going to, you know, poke the bear. We have to be conscious about our own buckets, right? Mm -hmm. We cannot pour into others unless we have a full bucket. And so when we are talking about those non-compliant and those difficult defiant children, we have got to check ourselves first. Right. Am I in the place where I'm regulated enough that I could look at little Johnny screaming at me and telling me no, 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 no. And me say, I understand. I get it. It's really hard to, to clean up. I get it. I'm going to give you a break when you're ready. It'll still be here. And then you get a chance to go to do whatever it is you wanted to do. Okay, Johnny, I love you and move away. Right. And so that takes a lot that takes a lot of energy. That takes a lot of self-control, right? And hopefully you have a teacher assistant or somebody in that room that can, you know, you can tag team uh -huh. on it because it, it, it is very frustrating. Yeah, it can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's very frustrating to hear no, no, no. And all you're trying to do is get out of the house. All you're trying to do is get the kids to the playground. All you're trying to do is get them to have, you know, yeah. just, you want this snack. You're right. And, 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 like you know, you said, and like you said, you you sometimes you're hearing no while they're doing what you ask them to do anyway. It's just okay. Yeah. So and I think I think that's another thing. I think we need to definitely make sure that our children know that we hear their voices. Right. And respect their nose sometimes. Mm -hmm. It is okay to ask, why? Why don't you want that? Mm-hmm. Or, or, you know, what makes it so like, it's okay to go ahead and explore some more like, and, and, as, as, and it's okay to respect that. No, as a matter of fact, I think it's very important to respect that. No, every once in a while, when it can be respected, because right. if you then give that, that child, that trust, mm -hmm. you're instilling trust. Okay. If Miss Sandy says no, she sometimes says yes. So if she's saying no, there must be a reason. And I trust there is a reason why. And, and that's why it's important to explain that sometimes no is not an option, especially when safety is an issue. Right. And so, but it's okay to explain it as well. Absolutely. You have explain a lot it. of kids, man. You have a lot of kids that all they need is that 30 extra seconds of an explanation as to why not. And then they're like, okay. And they go about their way like, like nothing ever really happens, right? So you remember the last time we were talking about um, behavioral momentum and, and riding that wave of success and also using the, the idea of behavioral momentum to create opportunities where these children are successful and compliant and maybe, you know, um, our schedule or the flow of our day goes from really easy, compliant things that they can do to mm -hmm. really hard. I don't really want to do that. Non like I'm going to be non-compliant for this request and then get them back to that. Oh, I really want to do that. And I really want to do that. So if we, if we take those ideas of like behavioral momentum and we, we incorporate the ideas of really highly effective reinforcers that are, you know, um, individualized to that particular student mm -hmm. and by the waves of the success stories that we've already had, because right. you cannot tell me that a child is not successful one time out of the day. You know, we have to be actively looking, right? If you, if, if a teacher tells me, oh, he's never, oh, you need to look better. Because mm -hmm. you cannot tell me that a child is never doing the right thing. You just aren't looking for it, right? And so we're going to, you know, make sure that we, we ride that wave of success. We use really, really, really high interest um, reinforcers and we create, a, a, a classroom system, a community where they know that they, they trust you mm -hmm. and your word is beca not because you're being mean or punitive, but because you're trying to keep them safe or it's or exactly. it's, a, it's a rule of the classroom and they learn to trust your no's because they know that the no is not often. For the most part, you say yes. <laughs> For the most part, you say yes. The no's do not come as often. As, as often. Absolutely. And as I love that as often because I mean my goodness how many times can you hear a no before you're like I'm no longer going to ask for permission right I'd rather I'm apologize. just going to do it 
<laughs> and I'll apologize later, right? So you, we have to understand that these three, four, five-year-olds, they're, 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 uh, they're us, <laughs> smaller versions, right? So we, in the same way that we would like to be respected, our choices to be respected, to be offered an opportunity to make a choice, that mm -hmm. alone, that alone um, is going to be huge for a lot of those non-compliant and defiant students. And then, uh, like I said before, you know, maintaining that structure, consistency, and follow through. And poke the bear. When poke the bear sometimes. Poke the bear, but only when you ooh, are ready. Ooh, when you're ready, ready. And you when can you follow ready. through. When, when you, you are ready through. and you can follow through for the entire day, because it might take an entire day. Some children are really easy. And then some of those highly spirited, mm -hmm. <laughs> those highly spirited ones, they'll give you a run for your money. Right. right. And so, and so and that's the other thing, like if you're going to um, give in, give in earlier in the tantrum rather than later if you understand what I'm trying to say. So if a child is tantruming and you just don't have it that day and you already know you're going to give in because you have a migraine, whatever it is, you have a migraine, you're nauseous, the child is screaming and they want, and you know, oh, it, or they're going to get it because I can't handle it today. Please don't wait four hours for that child to tantrum, 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 and then and give it then to them. And then give in. Because, what, why? Why would I say that? Because I am now reinforcing that, that behavior for an extended duration uh -huh. of, of a tantrum. When it's I almost like it's almost like uh, training, they're they're going through training at that point, so they can they can last a little bit longer. They can last a little bit longer, and so next right. time they're like, "Oh, I've been crying for four hours. Oh, all right, watch this. I got you for five. Absolutely. <laughs> up the ante. So if you ever feel like you're like today is not the day, that's okay. We're human. Give in a little earlier in, mm -hmm. in the tantrum. Provide those those opportunities for them to make their own choices and take deep breaths, ladies and gentlemen, because it's it's no. It's, <laughs> it's, it's all about, you know, and it's a beautiful thing that they're learning to be independent and that they're individualized individual human beings. So exactly. It's hard, but it's fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that, Sandy. And if you are still experiencing challenging behaviors in your classroom, you can always reach out to Debbie Kay at our warm line. And the number is 954-295-0672. If you found this video and other videos of ours helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we will see you back here next time. See you guys. Bye.